Hello friends, my name is Catherine and welcome to Storytime. Let's start with our welcome song. Welcome, 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 welcome. How are you? How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well, thank you. How about you? How about you? Welcome friends. And I wanted to send a special hello to Zariah, Kave, and Garrett. We really miss seeing you guys. Let's start with a song that I really like. It's called Everybody Wants to Be a Butterfly. So we're, when we sing about being a butterfly, you can flap your wings out like this, like a butterfly. And when you're a kitty cat, you can pull on your whiskers like this. And then when we sing about being a crocodile, you can go chomp, chomp like this. Sounds good? Okay, here we go. good friends. Let's sing another song. If you're happy and you know it. Ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Stomp, stomp. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, stop your feet, stop, stop. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, happy and you know it, shout hooray, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, two or three, clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray. If you're happy and you know it, two Stomp, stomp, hooray! If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're happy and you know it, do all three. Clap, clap, stomp, stomp, hooray! Very good. Okay. You know what makes me really happy these days are sweet treats. You'll see a theme in this story time. So the first book I'm going to read today is called The Cow Loves Cookies written by Karma Wilson and illustrated by Marcellus Hall. Whenever farmer feeds the horse, he feeds the horsey hay, of course. The horse just loves to nibble hay. He eats it every single day. But the cow loves cookies. Farmer knows what chickens need. He always gives them chicken feed. They scratch and cluck and peck all day. They love their feed. The horse loves hay. But the cow loves cookies. The farmer feeds the geese each morn. He always gives them sweet cracked corn. They honk for joy and flap their wings. They love the corn that farmer brings. Hay for horses, yes indeed. Give those chickens chicken feed. Corn for geese, they love it so. But when it comes to cows, we know that 
The cow loves cookies. When farmer feeds the hogs their slop, they love to eat that gooey glop. They oink and snort and grunt with glee. They eat like pigs, it seems to me. Of course we know the horse loves hay and chickens love their feet each day. Geese love corn as all geese should. The pigs think slop is mighty good. But cow would never eat that stuff. You couldn't pay the cow enough because the cow loves cookies. Farmer's dog just loves to eat when farmer gives him doggy treats. He gulps and gobbles with delight. He savors every meaty bite. Hay is what the horsey needs. The chickens all eat chicken feed. The geese munch corn. It tastes so fine. The hogs think slop is just divine. The dog adores his doggy treats. But cow would rather eat things sweet. So why does the cow love cookies? She and farmer make a deal, and every day they share a meal. Farmer packs a picnic lunch, and when the two sit down to munch, he takes cookies from a tin, and cow gives milk to dunk them in. Yum, says the farmer. Cow says, moo. Cow is happy, farmer too. They both love milk and cookies. But the duck loves quackers. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. Now I have a rhyme about another type of treat. What do these look like to you? That's right, they're cupcakes. Let's count them together. One, two, three, four, five. So the rhyme goes like this. Down around the corner at the cupcake shop were five yummy cupcakes with sprinkles on top. Along came a, let's see who's coming. <gasps> Elephant, one fine sunny day, who bought a cupcake and took it away. Bye, Elephant. And how many are left? One, two, three, four. Down around the corner at the cupcake shop were four yummy cupcakes with sprinkles on top. Along came a, let's see who else is here, a zebra. One fine sunny day who bought a cupcake and took it away. Yum. And how many are left? One, two, three. Down around the corner at the cupcake shop were three yummy cupcakes with sprinkles on top. Along came a, let's see who else is here today. A lion, one fine sunny day, who bought a cupcake and took it away. And we're left with one, two. Down around the corner at the cupcake shop were two yummy cupcakes with sprinkles on top. Along came a, See who's here. A deer, one fine sunny day, who bought a cupcake and took it away. Yum. And now we're left with one. Down around the corner at the cupcake shop was one yummy cupcake with sprinkles on top. Along came a girl, one fine sunny day, who bought the cupcake and took it away, and the shop is all sold out. <laughs> Thanks, friends. Shall we read one more story? Okay, this one's also about another kind of cake. This one's called A Big Moon Cake for Little Star by Grace Lynn. Little Star's mama laid the big moon cake onto the night sky to cool. Now, little star, Mama said, your mooncake took us a long time to bake, so let's see if you can make it last a while. Can you remember not to touch this big mooncake until I tell you to? Yes, Mama, little star said, nodding. 
and Little Star remembered as she brushed her teeth, washed her face, snuggled into bed, and fell asleep. But in the middle of the night, Little Star woke up. She forgot everything her mama had said and only remembered the big moon cake. Pat, pat, pat. Little Star's soft feet tiptoed to the big moon cake. Would her mama notice if she took a tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Mmm, yum. But was someone coming? Little Star flew back to bed. The next night, Little Star remembered the big moon cake again. That one bite had been so sweet and tasty. Was the cake still there? Yes, it was. There was that big moon cake, an almost perfect circle, all alone and delicious in the sky. Would her mama notice if she took another tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Yum! Little Star flew back to bed. And the next night, what do you think Little Star remembered? The big moon cake, of course. Would Mama notice if she took another tiny nibble? Little Star didn't think so. Yum! And the night after that, what did Little Star do? Nibble, nibble, yum! Night after night, Little Star took tiny nibble after tiny nibble of the big moon cake. Until one night, Little Star's mama went to look for the big moon cake. Where was it? It was gone. Instead of a glowing round cake, there was just a trail of twinkling crumbs. Little Star, her mama said, shaking her head, even though her mouth was curving. You ate the big moon cake again, didn't you? Little Star looked up, her grin reflecting her mama's smile. Yes, Mama. Little Star said, nodding. Now let's go make another one. The end. I hope you enjoyed that story. You may have noticed another voice in the reading of that this week, and that's my helper, Myra. So a big thank you to Myra. Now we've come to the end of story time, and we're going to sing our farewell song. But I also wanted to wish you all a good week. Take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll see you next time for Songs and Stories. We wave goodbye. Bye, friends.